So this presentation, I'll talk about the duodenum mucosal resurfaction and other endoluminal therapies, the one that don't involve suturing. These are my disclosures, I offer you to judge, and uh, I'll start talking uh, to you about like this. So obesity and diabetes, they come together. So obesity is the world epidemic, we call obesity and also have diabetes. It's world Health Organization words uh, to refer to this, those pandemics as we can clearly see how diabetes spread around the world, other metabolic disease that claim our attention, that is the fatty liver and apoge, uh, also on that, and even the ones that we don't think like uh, the most, like the polycystic ovarian syndrome, that we have it going uh, with obesity around the world, then it can be ameliorated with uh, improvement of obesity. So we have those interventions uh, on the stomach, uh, the one that involves suturing, uh, Shamo is gonna talk to you about it. And I'll talk about the ones, uh, and you see here, they are all FDA approved, so they are approved to clinical use. I'll talk to you interventions on the bowel. So we have the duodenal mucosal resurfacing. Uh, we have the magnetic anastomosis. We have the uh, duodenum uh, jejunal bypass using a sleeve. This one that's not much used on that. They are all experimental. Uh, so it's still in study, and we have to provide you with the evidence we have up to now. So in terms of the mucosal resurfacing, uh, the idea is to ablate the mucosa uh, of uh, the duodenal part of these, and we start that study in rats, when you go to Kakazak rats, diabetic type 2 diabetic uh, rats, and you see here on the bottom, when we ablate, mechanically ablate the, the mucosa of the duodenal, they have a known diabetic response. So then it went to a bigger animals, so like a, the any first in normal, so we are, could uh, safely ablate and on porcine model uh, the mucosa and see how it grows. And then we went to the first in human uh, to uh, perfect the technique and see the initial results. So the, you can see here how it's done. So we identify the papilla, tattoo the other side or put the clip on the other side. Then you go with your scope up to the right angle. Uh, leave a wire there, and over the wire, we then slide a very, uh, a very uh, unique balloon. It will touch the mucosa in two spots. A port will open, we inject a sal aspirate inject saline solution. So you leave the mucosa 360 degrees. Then we dislodge the balloon half centimeters, and then we do it again. So we have a circumferential lift. So it's about like lift, lift, and then ablate, as you can see, lift, lift, and ablate in the direction of right angle, so the target is around 10 centimeters of ablation uh, at the end of the procedure. So as we progress, uh, when we finish, just remove the balloon and patient can go home uh, in the same day. So you can see here by the pictures, uh, left to right, you see here the pre-procedure, the mucosa lifted, then ablated, then human sucker. That's how you can see. Also, we have these to show you the setup. So it's endoscopy and uh, x-ray. So you see in two screens, this is how the balloon is well positioned on that. Uh, you're not gonna see it inflating or not. You're gonna aspirate in the port to have a good seating when we ablate. And then you can see here just immediately the procedure, how damaged uh, is the mucosa. But uh, if you follow the patients one year after, this is how it looks pretty much normal to me. You can see here on this, uh, slides that uh, there is no damage on the further than mucosa uh, on uh, those random biopsies and non mouth and In terms of results, this is the first in human study, the first series uh, focusing on diabetes care. Then we got a better series in multicentric international uh, in between Europe and South America, and then some of the results. The H1C drops for around one uh, and stays for up to one month, as you can see here on the left and confirmed on the right of the graph. Also, there is an action uh, on the liver. So we see here is more blue, so less fat, less blue, more fat. So if you see the, the hepatic MRI, and you can see here uh, the visual effect. And if you go to the graph, so we have a 30% lowering uh, on the fat fraction. That is uh, really significant when we follow those patients. And we are studying that in a better way in, the, in this first uh, RCT trial in between Europe and Brazil with uh, uh, seven sensors, and you can see here the preliminary results. On you see here in uh, light blue the DMR, and in gray the sham. So it has a significant uh, effect in terms of dropping on H1C, and it's much more uh, highlighted on the responders on that. So actually, uh, this procedure is under FDA trial. So this finished the pilot, so start the pivotal, and we're going to see in uh, some. Uh, in, in one or two years, how it goes. 
Then we have the, the jejunal ileal bypass or the magnetic uh, anastomosis performing V2. So it's a very sophisticated magnet that pass into the channel of the endoscope, assuming an octagon shape. And on the next one, uh, we're gonna see how, how, it, that, how it, it is being done. So the idea is to do a colonoscopy and intubate the ileal for around 70 centimeters. And then uh, by the upper uh, part of the boil, so you go up to the right angle and go more, 50 centimeters more, granny to a drop zone. So it transilluminates to see each other. Also we use x-ray to see uh, what we call the, the, the so-called drop zone. So you can check here the position of the scope uh, in the luminary and by x-ray. So we delivered the, the, the first magnet and the second magnet. They have three sutures and outside with joysticks, we align them until they, they, they combine in a perfect shape. So let it go and they will be there. We're gonna cut the threads and uh, that's it. The procedure is finished. And uh, you wait uh, around seven days, the anastomosis or the deviation of the form is the lateral lateral, uh, as you can see here. So you have another path for the food. And you see here uh, than the previous presentation that uh, quite some of the metabolic surgery procedures use those uh, boil deviations to improve the metabolic effects on that. So you can see here, it's not the old uh, terminal terminal, or terminal lateral, it's lateral lateral. So it's a different uh, way that was done in the, the first uh, surgical procedures. And as you can confirm here on that one. But that's one study that was done in Czech Republic and a small study of 10 patients you have here, have uh, obese patients, pre-diabetics and diabetics, so 10 patients. And here you see in light yellow, the uh, how it goes with the glycemia. In the age, you can see also all of the same path on diabetes and pre-diabetics up to 12 months. Those patients were followed for three years. And at the end of three, three years, around 1.8% drop of A1C. What happened with the weight, you can see in light yellow, the percent of total weight loss, 14.6% on the, on the far right. And at the end of three years, it was around 18%. Uh, there was no severe disaster event effect for at the end of three years, one of these patients developed uh, internal hernia that needs a proscopy to be corrected on that. So you can see here, the first main uh, images on the left, you see the magnet being deployed in the assuming the octagon shape. On the right, for, for security and per protocol, you need a laparoscopic uh, uh, guidance, or not guidance, but surveillance to check. And you can see here that the magnets are very firmly attached on that. So in this next one, this slide, uh, I'm gonna show to you that you can see here the three lumen uh, showing the lateral lateral. That's is barely, you can see any inflammation on that. And on the right side, you can see the lateral lateral deviation on this. So it was, uh, it could be demonstrated that it was uh, feasible and safe, but very cumbersome, take a lot of time. You have to use most of the most, uh, some of the most experienced endoscopists to have it done. And in this study in uh, Argentina is an RCT. We start an open label, then gonna become an RCT. And it was changed. So in the beginning, we are able uh, to do the procedure. As you can see here uh, on the right side, uh, the magnets coupled uh, and the laparoscopic image here, uh, and the team was very happy, but then it had to be changed. So get back to the lab. And then the new development is now a laparoscopic uh, technique. And you can see, you're gonna see here. So instead of doing fully uh, endoscopic, uh, we start with laparoscopy, a 250, 300 centimeter video second valve. Then you go by endoscope and do adeno, so you deliver the magnet. Then you're gonna puncture by laparoscopy the idiom parts, and you're gonna deliver the, the magnet inside. Then you're gonna put in a way that this puncture on the bowel will be covered by the two magnets, so you don't need to suture it back. And then what you do, you just uh, by endoscopy and laparoscopy, you let the magnets attach it by themselves. And, uh, and the same uh, of the dodenoidal bypass, uh, it's the same of the previous. So the first image here of a clinical case, uh, and you can see here the attachment of the and the ileum. So now there is around eight cases done before the pandemic with very good results. Patients are doing fine, dropping weight and dropping A1C. So we will have to wait for further results on that. So that's what we have in terms of literature. And uh, uh, we should end here with the Dodino Jejunal Bypass. The GI sleeve uh, is the one that we start uh, early. So you have the opportunity as the DMR to do the first thing of this one. So you do an endoscopy, you drop a, a guide wire, over the guide wire comes a capsule, inside the capsule like a, 
like a parachute. You're gonna have the sleeve, the two feet the sleeve. So you're gonna stand and negotiate passage with an automatic ball, then you let the ball go. Then inside the capsule, there is a, an anchor, a stand with 20 bars and post smoking pistol. And that's it. So patients go home and how it works, food in yellow, bilio pancreatic juice in green, gonna mix two feet uh, after. So like a bilio pancreatic lingo for the second bypass. And at the end of one year, you're gonna remove that with a customized uh, cap and a customized grasper. So you get the suture around the, that collapse and then remove. So that's very solid uh, evidence, uh, animals uh, to be begin, uh, begin with. And then you can see here, it mimics a gastric bypass in terms of, or, or metabolic gel one response. And this is how it works. So this graph in four quadrants, if you go to the inferior left quadrant, are the patients who lose weight and drop weight loss. So you go on the left, uh, upper left, you're gonna see patients that only drop a one c On the upper right, the non response, and the inferior right, you have the ones who only lose weight. So the patients lose weight and drop a one c 1.5 around that. So in terms of just weight loss, you can see those long-term or long-term, the longer studies done in Chile and Brazil, the patients uh, drop below 15% of, of total weight loss. So this is a lot of studies of that around, around 30, 35 studies, and even get to a PV study on the SD, where they analyze that, uh, that the, the, the non-randomized study you can see here on the bottom is A1C. So to the right is uh, a worsening of A1C, and to the left is getting better. So you can see around 1.5 drop of A1C. And even when we go to the randomized control trials, it stays the same. So the drop of uh, around 1.5 of uh, A1C. So it went to US uh, and uh, there was a big FDA study that gathered to people uh, study, but ends, ends up that uh, due to hepatic abscess, 3.5%, uh, almost triple that we have in Europe in uh, Latin America, the study was stopped for safety. And even if the study stopped, if you remember the first four quadrant graphs is the same. So here the red dots, they're sham, and blue dots, they are uh, device uh, patients. So you can see here the concentration in inferior left quadrant, meaning patients that drop A1C and, uh, and uh, drop weight. And this was just a third of this uh, study done. Fortunately, they got another chance. They withdraw the protocol. And now they are under, again, a pilot study in FJ to see if they can go to the pivotal study. So this is, we have covered a lot of uh, literature and evidence with that we just have to see. In the future, uh, we're going to combine what uh, Shamal is going to show to you next with those metabolic procedures. So maybe, uh, and even with the new drugs, we can get with the efficacy of a surgical procedure keeping the safe. And so thank you very much.